Okay, I'd like to talk about something that we started in class, but that we're going to continue. And that is something called the male frequency capture coefficients. So what we're trying to do now is to use a spectrogram as a kind of low level feature, and then to derive other things on top of this that are going to help us with higher level tasks. Like as we talked about genre identification or artist identification or things like that. So if I listen to this timeless tune here, so that was um, Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze. And you see some of the things that we talked about, like the beats occur with these vertical lines. You can see harmonics that occur from the instruments um, and things like that. But this representation is has a few drawbacks if we're going to think of inferring information from this. Um, one of them is that it's not represented in a way that matches our perception of pitch. So the frequencies are linearly spaced from 0 up to the sample rate over 2. Um, here it's showing the integer, so the number of cycles that each frequency goes through over, over an interval. But the frequencies are spaced linearly. But we hear pitch exponentially, right? So we perceive pitch exponentially in frequency because the frequency is equal to 440 times 2 raised to the note number over 12, right? Um, so that is actually our perception. Um, the frequency is actually exponential in our perception. Okay. So we might not want to include the same number of bins from the high frequencies because we're not going to be able to tell as much of a difference between two of these bins as we are between two of the bins down here. Um, we also perceive loudness, or actually we perceive intensity, that's our perception, intensity, logarithmically and loudness. So we don't necessarily have the right amplitudes here either. Okay, although I am showing, actually in this image, I'm showing, showing it in decibels. Um, if I looked at the original spectrogram, I wouldn't, there, there's not as much that would pop out here. I don't have the right contrast. Okay, anyway, so we're gonna work on some features um, to rectify this. Oh, one more thing. Okay, so we got the problem, which, which is pitch, um, is perceived exponentially in frequency. We also have the fact that loud, that intensity is perceived logarithmically in loudness. And the third thing is, so, the, so these are the drawbacks of the spectrogram. Um, the third thing is that Spectrogram has a lot of information, probably more than we need. Um, so spectrogram has a lot of frequency bins, probably more than we need um, or are useful for certain tasks. Um, so we also want to do what's known as a dimension reduction. or a lossy, what I would call a lossy compression of the spectrogram that hopefully retains important musical aspects. So these are some design constraints we have. We want, it, we want the features that we're, we're creating out of the spectrogram, on top of the spectrogram, to be perceptually relevant. So they need to match our perceptions of frequency and, and intensity. Um, they also, we would like them to be more compact than the spectrogram. The spectrogram is actually one-to-one -one with audio samples, and there's a lot of audio samples per second. Probably more than we need to really infer important aspects of the sound. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to look at beyond the rhythmic features I showed you is something called the male frequency capture coefficients. So the idea is, okay, we're first going to think about how do we make bins frequency bins that are not spaced linearly in frequency, but actually exponentially in frequency to match our perception. 
So we're going to create something called a triangular filter bank. So in this example, I'm going to take 40 bins between 80 hertz and 8,000 hertz. And each one of the bins is shown here. Each bin is a triangle. And what you do is you take all the frequencies under that triangle and you sum them together, weighted by that triangle. So here, bin, you know, looks like about bin 680 gets the most weight, and then the weights fall off around that. Um, here, bin 600, it looks like, gets the most weight, and then they fall off around that. Um, and one of the things you notice is that at the high end, these triangles are wider than they are at the low end. And that's because, actually, this whole range here in frequency, even though it's wider in frequency, it's the same range in pitch as these much thinner triangles down here. So we're going to summarize the entire linear, linearly spaced range of frequencies with just these bins. Okay. Now let me look at this expressed as a matrix. So each one of these triangles is put in a row of a matrix. And so you can see that the, the ones that are lower in frequency are much thinner than the ones that are higher in frequency. But it's going to help us to look at this as a matrix because this is going to give us a very convenient way to perform this transformation. Okay. So let me show you something else now. Um, okay. So here's that same matrix, which it has 40 bins. I'm going to put each bin in a row and it has 1025 columns. That's the same number of columns as there are linearly spaced frequencies in the spectrogram, right? So, so this, is, this is the domain here is all the frequency indices in the spectrogram. Uh, if we look at this as a matrix multiplication problem, well, we've got a matrix here, which has 40 rows and 1025 columns. The spectrogram can be thought of as a matrix with 1025 rows and like 430 columns. And so actually this matches up here because we need the same number of columns in the first matrix as there are rows in the second matrix. So le compte est bon, as the French would say. The count is good. 40 times 1025, that matrix, multiplied by 1025 by 430 matrix, that's going to give us a 40 by 430 matrix. Okay. And here is the result. So this is what's called the MEL spectrogram here. So what, what's happened is each row of this MEL spectrogram is the dot product of a single row of this filter bank with every column in the spectrogram. So each row here corresponds to one of these MEL bins. Okay, so it's like integrating under that triangle in every single window. Um, and if I look higher up here, it's like integrating under this wider triangle also in every single window. So what you notice this is done, this is taking the original spectrogram and it's kind of stretched it out, right? I can see a lot of the same features, but I can see there's more resolution in the low end relative to the resolution in the high end here. Um, I'm spending more bins in the lower end than in, in the high end, and they stretch out in the high end. And that's the way it should be because that's the way that we hear. But look how quick the code is. Once we have this matrix set up with the filter bank, it's simply a matrix multiplication. Now, one, extra, one other thing I'm doing is, okay, the fact that these triangles are exponentially spaced in frequency matches my first criterion. Uh, the second criterion I tackle with after, um, after, actually, so, okay, so the dot product happens with the amplitude squared, which is, which is power, if you remember. Um, and after you integrate or sum under each triangle, you do the log 10, which is, which puts it into decimal range. So that's how you end up with this picture here. Um, all right, so this addressed all three of our criteria. We have the exponentially spaced frequencies. We have the logarithm of the energy, which is what we perceive as intensity.
and loudness. And then we have the compression because we're only using 40 bins. Um, let me just, just for the sake of argument, let me jump up to 100 bins here and I'll show you the difference. So that's 100 bins. Here's what the filter bank looks like now. Still has the same properties, just more, more bins. And you'll see that this image becomes a little bit finer, but still has all the same properties. So this is the image we're going to use to, to summarize um, instrument sounds, speech, and things like that. All right. So I want you to create this matrix in the exercise, and we'll be ready for class. So we'll do that now.